Last week, we discussed how we can derive asymptotic upper bounds of algorithms which has got complex manipulations on arrays. And we spoke about certain operations of arrays are cheap and certain ones are pretty expensive. And that's something you're supposed to recall from last week. And this week, we're going to start talking about the other kind of uh, basic data structures. And these are also the building blocks that people always have to judge whether to use them, uh, use them or versus using a race. So you will always have to make a judgment call as to which one to use. There is no silver bullets about which one is always perfect to use. You have to judge uh, exactly what's the nature of your application or your algorithm so you will know which one would be the one to use. So today, hopefully after the module, we will be able to uh, give you more ideas about which one uh, to really uh, use whenever you want to build your creative algorithm. And the one we're going to introduce now is called Singly Linked Lists. And we'll see how it goes uh, for this week, but we'll definitely try to cover as much as possible for the Singly Linked uh, List. There is another variance to the linked list called Doubly Linked List, which will be the second half or the, one, uh, the last one third of this particular lecture. But we'll see how it goes. If we cannot really get to doubly linked list uh, this week, we'll definitely finish that next week. We'll see. But it's really important to really understand just the singly linked list alone. That one will give you a very good idea about how things should be uh, should be working. And if you go for any programming interview, linked lists are simply uh, definitely one of the very common and popular uh, kind of question you will get, uh, you will tend to get. And of course, you know, uh, when people give you problems, very likely it might be something that you haven't seen before and how can you solve them you you want to make sure you got a very solid uh fundamental about how basic operation of a linked list should work that's exactly the purpose for this lecture all right enough about the introduction let's now talk about linked list and for the beginning part i would like to just give you some intuition before programming we i want to really show you uh give you some very uh, some conceptual sketch about how linked list should really work you will see that it's very very different from arrays and just about arrays, we know that it's performed very well on indexing. It's, uh, it's simply big of one constant operation. But whenever you want to insert maybe somewhere in the middle into the array, like uh, like the uh, the uh, fragment of code that we went over last time, it will be linear, not constant anymore. And similarly, if you try to delete uh, some elements in certain index in the middle of the array, and in that case, that will also require some shifting of the elements, maybe all the way to the left, and also some copying. So that will also make it linear. So make sure you understand very well. So did these two bullet points basically summarize the essence about how uh, how expensive operations of array uh, would cost, All right? So now we're gonna learn about some new thing. And it will be an, uh, uh, an alternative uh, data structure to arrays. So you really have to see which one to use. Again, we cannot simply say arrays are bad and linked lists are good. This, that's not the intention. We want to see under what circumstances should you use one but not the other. That will be the main lesson to learn at the end. What's really a linked list? Definition would be uh, the linked list is simply a series of connected nodes forming a linear sequence. It's not really a tree or it's not really a graph. It's simply a linear sequence, meaning that you, got you can really uh, in, uh, you can really name the position in the, in the list, maybe from index zero all the way to uh, maybe size minus one, similar to array. However, the way they actually uh, locate a particular position in the collection is different. So that's something we'll need to uh, go in detail as well. So at the runtime, uh, the node connections are through reference aliasing. And this is something I will also need to emphasize when I talk about the Java implementation. If you actually, it uh, doesn't matter if you use an OOP language or you're using a maybe procedural language like a C, you always have to use kind of like a reference aliasing. You have to manipulate addresses of the, 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 uh, the nodes to really uh, make, uh, make sure they are somehow connected. So that's why the connection point is really maybe the, usually the tricky part about manipulating linked lists for beginners. That's something I'll make sure I uh, explain uh, as clearly as possible. But reference aliasing is really something you learn, uh, hopefully just from the uh, maybe later part of your first year when you were first introduced to OOP. And then when you actually get to, uh, got to 2030, you learn about the more advanced manipulation for the aliasing, for example, about call by value, or maybe aggregation, composition, and, and etc. So these topics are also relevant. So if you want to re, uh, brush up your memory about these topics, you, you may want to do so. All right. But anyway, I'm going to talk about specifically about how reference aliasing can be applied to uh, singly linked list in just a moment. 
And let's let me go over a few bullet points so you have some kind of an idea, and then I'll visualize exactly what's happening over here. At this point, we don't need to write any code just yet, but we will at some point soon. So each remember a list is simply a chain of connected nodes. So that means there are many nodes in a list. So each node will store two things in principle. One is a, a reference to some data objects. And a data object over here can be of any type. It can be string, it can be integer, it can be person, can be bank account, can be uh, maybe another list. Okay. So here it's very general about what type you should really want you, you really want to store. And to really begin with, I just want to make the data objects as simple as possible, like a string, just a string objects, just for uh, just for me to uh, easier to focus on the al uh, algorithmic part of the linked list operations. Once we are done with all the basic operation for linked list, you have a very good idea about how to design algorithms around it. I will move on to talk about how you can make a much better design by using the so-called generics. So this, that's why last week I asked, actually asked you to really review about Java generics. But if you haven't, now would be the time to really catch up. Uh, also to make sure you can uh, understand exactly uh, what's being said. And when I assess you about linked list, there will be two things I can assess you about. One is about designing algorithms around linked lists for sure. And number two is how you can uh, manipulate the generics uh, feature, which I'll also talk about, all right? And the second reference each node will store will be just the next node, right? This will be very, very different from array. If you think about what each, uh, each cell of the array, what each element of uh, each uh, index of the array will store, what do they store? They simply store just a reference maybe to some data objects. And how do you go from index zero to index one? You don't really have to store any pointer from index zero to index one. You just directly go for array indexing, right? But for linked list, no. The way for you to go to any other, like a, uh, go from a, an earlier note to a later note in the uh, list, you have to somehow follow this kind of a pointer. It's called the next pointer. But later on, when we talk about uh, the doubly linked list, this is more like an extension to a singly uh, linked list, we have to not only rely on next note, but we also have to rely on previous note. That's something we'll see as well uh, later this week or next early next week. All right. I'll draw a diagram in, uh, very soon, but I just want you to see if you can kind of imagine or visualize just based on the text. But we're going to see exactly how to visualize them. All right. So that's exactly what I want you to contrast. So whenever you talk about a linked list, one characteristic feature is about the relative positioning. Right. So if you really want to go to a particular position of the linked list, for, for example, you want to go to index five, which will be the six elements in the list. In that case, it would be considered a linear time operation, as we'll see. But for array indexing, constant time. Right. So that's a really one uh, aspect where the two basic uh, data structure are very uh, different in terms of performance and also the way they work. Right. Relative positioning. So whenever you want to go to a node, you want to think about what will be the next one you, uh, to really, uh, you have to traverse maybe from the very beginning of the list all the way to that particular note by the second uh, reference over here, the next node, okay? Uh, as opposed to the absolute indexing of the array. You can simply say, I want to go to index zero, I want to go to in index 99, I can just go there. But for linked list, you cannot, right? Just remember that. All right, so this will be a very first diagram. It's uh, pretty simple, not as good, but I'll draw one very soon. You can think about this as just one particular node. This one here, uh, you can see the node is divided into two compartments over here. One is, uh, you simply say MSP. You, you think about this one here, it's just like a data objects. We are storing some data. And the second part over here is simply the reference to uh, the next node over here. All right, so you can see each node is gonna be div divided into two compartments, the data over here, and also the uh, reference to the next node. That's basically uh, the structure. And let me now switch to iPad. Let me draw some diagram to really summarize what I have just said in terms of bullet points. Okay. Okay. So we would like to have some visual introduction to the linked list before we have to program uh, in Java. Okay. So these are the points I just mentioned over here, right? I have mentioned them all, but let's now try to see, uh, just revisit them by drawing some diagram. Okay. So this, uh, for, uh, let's start with this. Each node in the linked list will contain two references, reference one and reference two. Reference one is to some data objects, and reference two is going to be to the next node in the list. So let's start from the beginning. 
So what would be the simplest and smallest singly linked list? Well, remember, linked list is simply just a collection. What would be the smallest collection? Well, a collection with nothing in it. So let's now try to visualize exactly what's uh, going to happen. Okay. So case number one. So case number one would just be an empty, empty singly linked list. Okay. To visualize it, very easy. You can think about there's always a pointer over there available for us to know where the, be the beginning of the list is. That's really the starting point for any algorithm. So it would be just called head. And in the beginning, head is simply pointing to null. That's how you actually visualize the, an empty list. Okay, so you can, the null over here is very important to actually understand that it's actually a reference type. Meaning, uh, so when uh, when the reference type is it uh it's not storing anything meaningful like uh the address of some valid objects is going to be null, right? You know about the value null very well from Java programming. So let's now extend the context a little bit. What about one node larger? Okay, let's say we have let's say maybe a singly linked list with size one. How would that look like? Well, we definitely got a head for sure. But now the head is actually going to point to some valid node. And remember, each node is going to have a fixed structure with two uh, fields or two attributes. Right? Let's now visualize the first node over here, which will be the head. And there will be two compartments. And this will be the, the simple way to vi really visualize a node. There, uh, there should be two ways to do this. I'll show you both. One will be slightly more complicated for you to see how exactly the memory has been utilized when you actually try to uh, build a uh, list structure but i think what i'm drawing right now will be very beneficial if all you want is to really see the idea about how things should be connected together so that'll be enough for you to design any algorithm which one to use is kind of up to you but i'll show you both uh throughout the lecture all right so let's say for this first note uh the convention is the first compartment over here will simply uh give you the data objects uh the reference to some data objects let's say we're storing string uh names of person how about we just put Suyang over here? Okay, so that'll be the data for the first node. So this will be the data for the first node over here. And the first node happened to be just the head of the list. And what about the next one? The next one is actually going to be this part over here, which I said is going to be just a reference to the next node, right? At the moment, we only got one node in the list because we assume that the, uh, the list is of size one. So what, what I would do is I'm simply just going to say for this reference field, it's going to simply point into null. It's very important for you to see why this is actually null over here. It is saying that the head of the list is pointing to the first node in the list, just one. Since the next node over here of the first node is simply null, that means we are, uh, that's it. So now that will be, that will be the end of the list. Right? So if you really want to calculate the size of the uh, list, you have to maybe initiate, uh, initialize some counter and then count until you can see the next node for the current node is actually null. That's something we'll see. That's a very basic uh, operation we have to study as well. Right? But for now, I just want to give you some intuition. Hopefully so far it's still okay, right? Let's now just do one more. Okay? What about we have a singly linked list, let's say of size three. Okay? Let's say over here, so let's say we got a singly linked list with size three. So how do we draw? Let's say the head reference over here is going to point to the first node. And since we know the size is three, so that means the next node over here is actually going to point to just another node that is not null. So that'll be the second node over here. And then since we uh the size is actually three so that means the second node is also pointing to not now but just another node which will be the third node and knowing that the size is actually three so now we're pretty much reaching the end so that means the third node over here is going to point to just now over here right now you can see why i said if in the very beginning is simply just a chain of connected nodes and you can see based on this particular structure we're only using the next reference to uh, point to the next node in some way that gives us lots of flexibility when uh it will be very uh flexible for you to add something into the into the list for example if i actually uh i'll get to there in just a moment to give you some idea it will be some algorithm that we have to implement and show to you 
So for the data side, it could be that this part over here may be uh, some name, let's say Suyam, and this will be another name, let's say Yuna, and this may be just another name, maybe Hyam. Right, just some data objects over here. And for the relative position, so this will be index zero, index one, and also index two. If I say I want to go to index two of the list, I cannot just go here directly because there is no reference directly pointing to this particular node, except that I have to follow the corresponding next node. But in order to get to this next node, I must know what the reference is for this particular node. In order to get there, I have to know what the next node reference is, and which will be the head. So always, if you really want to go to a particular index, you have to go relatively. You cannot go directly. You want to go indirectly. So you're going to start with the head and go follow the next reference and then go to that particular node. That's what you have to do. That's something we'll see as well, right? Just see diagrammatically, the way a linked list works is very different from array, right? And relative positioning is actually going to be, actually, I, I, I put the, uh, the opposite way. Let me fix it right away. Okay, so what I meant to say over here is whenever you got relative positioning is going to be linear, whereas for absolute indexing like array is going to be very cheap, right? So I said the exact opposite, right? This is also something we'll see exactly how things will work once we got the implementation. Whenever you want to go to a particular position in the linked list, you need a loop. But whenever you want to go to a particular position in the array, you just need array indexing. So that's why it will be big of one, right? That's something you want to uh, notice. Okay? And the chain may grow or shrink dynamically, right? You know what? I'm just picky about the color over here. I think green should really mean it's, uh, it's actually cheap. So I should really uh, highlight this as green. And big of n means it is not good, right? So th what does this mean? This means if your algorithm will have to really go to a particular position in the collection very often. In that case, choosing linked list will make it very expensive for every uh, direct indexing. On the other hand, if your algorithm will actually uh, require a certain operation that will be inherently cheap for linked list, in that way you should really choose uh, linked list. That's something I will also summarize at the end.